previously, we talked about the basic structure for creating the controls of my RPG game character. And in this video, it's time to start building these controls by doing these two steps to identify our keyboard input without actually having any coding experience. Hi everyone, this is Zebra, and if you watched my last devlog, you know that I really tried to cheat my way in into Unreal Engine template to avoid actually learning how to program, even though I knew that eventually I'll have to go through this, but I was just delaying the inevitable until I guess I reach this point where I should at least have a basic understanding of how this whole blueprint scheme works. So I went through a lot of tutorials talking about the subject, and especially the one related to the character movement and input controls, which is by the way, just how amazing this is. I mean, thank you YouTube. I remember back in the 2000s, I had to save a small fortune to just buy a book with some CDs attached to it with a couple hours of tutorials. We're writing on the internet, cyberspace, virtual reality but here you have infinite hours of amazing videos up for grabs so one day i'm online and i find beyond.com before you know it i'm as free as i want to be again thank you youtube and of course you can check all the tutorials that i went through in the link below and now since i understand how these things works we come to a segment which i guess i'm going to try to make it a thing in my devlog where i explain the blueprints that i'm going to use in this video so if you are an expert programmer or even a junior one actually you could jump to the next chapter, unless you want to crack some laughs watching us mortals trying to break the code. But since I'm a new, I wanted to explain it to all non-programmers and artists of the world. So as I said in my first devlog, what I like about Unreal Engine is the node-based programming system, which reduces programming code, functions and variables into blocks like these, which they call nodes. So for example, this is how you create an integer equal to 10 in C++. While in Unreal Engine, you'll have it like this. Another example, here is a for loop, and here as a blueprint. You see, they could be pretty handy, since you can move them around to help you visualize what you want to do, and make the coding process less abstract, even though the core of these blueprints are written in C++. But what you see is the end result of some sort of user-friendly interface for visually oriented people like me. And the first type of blueprint that we will come across are the events, the one with the red color. And mostly you see them in the beginning of the code because usually in games in order for something to happen, it must be triggered by an event of some sort. So for example, this node says if you press the letter A on your keyboard, you will print the word hello on the screen. Like this. So, this key event blueprint is sitting there waiting to only be triggered when we press A. And when it does, as a result, we move to the next blueprint that prints letter hello. This might sound pretty obvious, but you can imagine applying this event concept to your entire game, so in the code everything is waiting for some sort of event to happen to trigger a series of commands. Press jump, that an event, hitting a wall, another one, get into water, changing biomes, dropping wood, detected by an enemy, all these are events. Some of them are built in and shared kinda universally with other game engines and even programming languages with different names and some are only made for our real engine to be added based on the object in the game. So you see here, if I select the character capsule, you'll have these list of events related to the character which you can add to your blueprint. So for example, if my game required the character to automatically pick up an item, I will definitely use the begin overlap event. So the second that the character overlap with the item in my level, it triggers this event that will cause the item to get picked up. And the most important event type blueprints that we're going to go through today are first event begin play, which get triggered the moment that your game launches and it's helpful for setting up your default values before starting the game, like what the armor that your character is wearing or loading your controls and so on. The second event blueprint is the event tick, which is also very common. And this one gets triggered every frame while playing the game. So if your game is running on 120 frames per second, it means that the series of commands that link to this event has been executed 120 times per second. And while the event begin play get executed once when we load the game, this one executes the code that links to it all the time. And that's one of the reasons why sometimes you have lagging or drop of frame rate in your game. Because if you are bad in programming, you'll put an unnecessary code here that makes it heavier for your computer to process. So it won't manage to execute the code 120 times per second. Instead, it does 60 times, so your frame rate drops to 60 frames per second. And sometimes to 10 or 1 frame per second. And that's why you need to be cautious when dealing with this type of events. <laughs> yeah, look who's talking. 
But anyway, the third type of event blueprints is the enhanced input action. As I mentioned in the previous video, in order to control the character, we need to create input controls files and load them inside an input mapping file that describes these controls. And this event is the one that you can use to call these controls from that file. So if we want the character to jump, we use enhanced input action jump event, which gets triggered when we press the jump button. And the same goes to other controls. So, great start. We're done with the event blueprint. Cool. Next type will be the functions, which I could put them into three categories. I call them getters, setters, and custom. My naming is not quite accurate. I'm just new in this. But to make it easier for you, you can consider the first two as an opposite side of the same coin. So the getters are these green blocks that helps you getting information and parameters to use in your code. Like getting the player location and rotation or forward vector, or even getting some specific parameters that you created while coding and so on. On the opposite side, you have the setters, these blue functions that helps you to set these parameters instead of getting them. So for example, changing the location and rotation of your character. And the third and the most important type are the custom made functions, which are the ones that you make manually in order to execute a series of command as one block of code. So for example, if you want to create a function for your character to exit a room, let's call it exit room function. First, you need to make him to walk to the door. So you create another function called walk to door. Then hold the knob then open door, exit room, close door, then release the knob. So all these tiny functions could be packed into one that is called exit room. And each one of these tiny functions that you just created contains a series of commands themselves. So for example, walk to door, which is the first action in the chain, could include a getter that gets the location of the door and then feed these parameters into a built-in setter function called simple move that execute an action to move the character from his current location to the door. And you can imagine how using the same logic could be applied to the whole chains of functions. See? Easy. And with that, we are done with the event and functions. That leads us to the third type, which are the flow control blueprints. And from the name, you can imagine that this type helps you to control the flow of your code and the sequence of executing your blueprint. Like in this case, the sequence is from event tick to print hello. Simple, it goes in this direction, but using the flow control blueprints could manipulate that. And the most common flow control blueprint is the branch, in other programming languages called the if conditioning. Yeah, don't bother about that, but what it does, it will look at the condition here, and if it's true, it triggers the true output, and if it false, it triggers the false output. So, for example, I could create a string called viewer and make a branch condition, which if the viewer are equal to subscribe, then move to this branch and print on screen Ibra is happy. But if it falls, then move to this branch instead and print Ibra is sad. And based on that, if we set the default value of the viewer is not subscribed, we got Ibra is sad. But if we change it to subscribed, we'll get Ibra is happy. So yeah, don't make Ibra sad, make him happy. And you can imagine with this logic, you can do all kinds of stuff. Like in the event of clicking on the door, if the door is open, then we close it. If it's not, then we open it. Or if the character is dead, then splash blood. If it's alive, do nothing. This sort of stuff. Ah, that was a long introduction. I hope I didn't bore you. But that was necessary to have before moving to the juicy part, which is making the control of the character. And as I mentioned in the third devlog, I explained this structure to do so. And it starts with identifying the controls. So we ask question, what will my character do? Well, I guess he'll move, jump, and run. And as easy as that, we create three input action called, you guessed it, move, jump, run. Although they are not the same type. So for example, the run got two states, either running or not running. So either true or false. As you can see, that describe a Boolean, which gives you a true or false value. And the same thing goes for jump, jumping or standing. Although for the move input action, 
the character either go to the right or left or up or down so the type of this one should be axis 2d because the value of the move controls spread either on the x-axis for the right and left or the y-axis for top and down and after doing that we create an input mapping file to assign a keyboard key to each input so for the jump spacebar run left shift Although for the move, since it's 2D axis, you need to assign a key to every direction. So on the X, D, negative X, A, Y, W, negative Y, S. It's called a bit weird on Unreal Engine, the negative called negate and Y called swizzle input action value for some reason, while the X is nothing, which is basically the default. But don't worry about it, it just looked like this. Anyway, now let's set everything up to be able to start programming. We create blueprint class, we choose the character type, and what distinguishes this type from others, this tiny thing that called character movement component in it. It contains all the parameters that your main character needs, from speed to jump to fly and so on. You'll see how we can use that later. And now we add our skeletal mesh that we imported here, and the animation blueprint here. And from our main level, we will go to the word setting and we set our default font class as the blueprint that we just made. So at this point, if we click play, we will see nothing. I mean, as I said in the previous devlog, you need to have a camera so you can display the character there. And to do so, we create a spring arm that contains our camera and we adjust the parameter to match the camera angle that we want in our game. And now if you press play, you see that everything is set up properly and we are ready to start programming process. I will stop here, although I was planning to continue to talking about how I make the character, but that will be a really long video, so I will leave that to the next devlog to continue from this point. So together we will have the time to make the controls and tell you about the mistake that I did in the process. And I guess this video was a bit technical and some sort of explainer. Please let me know in the comments if you are interested in me explaining and describing some blueprints or should I go right into the programming process. My logic was that I got so excited figuring these things out and I thought maybe someone else will feel the same when he hears it from me. But now looking at it, this video was a mix of a devlog, explainer and a tutorial. So I'm not sure what it is. And for that, please let me know what you think. And I will definitely consider it. So thank you for watching, and as a reminder, be sure to check our social media links to learn more about the project, and if you want to support my journey, please check my Patreon page, and a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, you guys are the best, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next video, bye.